Hi everyone, my name is Sammy and I work for Riverside County Parks and Open Space District. Today, I'm here at Hidden Valley Nature Center and I'm going to be sharing with you a little bit about snakes. This program should take about a half hour, so make sure that you've used the restroom, that you're comfortable. Um, if you wanna have a snack, go ahead and I hope you enjoy the program. All right, so we are going to get started with a question. I want to know, is anyone afraid of snakes? It's okay if you are, don't worry about it. Um, I will admit that I was actually terrified of snakes. And this was before I knew more about them. But the reason I was terrified of snakes was mainly because of this movie right here. Has anyone seen The Jungle Book? It's actually a really good movie, but when I was a little girl, this part of the movie where Ka the snake looks into Mowgli's eyes and hypnotizes him and then wraps him up was really scary for me. I thought that if I encountered a snake in the wild, that that snake was gonna do the same thing to me. But that is actually not true at all. This is just a movie um, that's not something that's actually going to happen. And I hope that by the end of this program, you learn a little more about snakes and you feel less afraid of them and maybe you will be more interested in them. So first of all, there are two types of snakes. There are venomous snakes and there are constrictors. The difference between these snakes is how they hunt their food. So constrictors, they do not have venom and they do not have fangs. So they will hunt their food, they'll use their special snake muscles to squeeze that food and then they swallow it down whole. Now venomous snakes, they'll hunt their food and then the first thing they do is they bite their prey, their food, what they're going to eat, like a rat or a mouse. And when they bite their food, they release their fangs and in those fangs, they release venom. Now constrictors, they do not have fangs because they do not have venom, but venomous snakes they release venom, which is like a poison, out of those fangs to first either paralyze or kill um, their prey that they are about to swallow whole. And they do that before they swallow it. Um, I know that sounds kind of rough and really kind of creepy, but here's the thing. A snake cannot eat grass. A snake cannot eat plants or it can't go and go through the drive-thru of In-N-Out and buy a hamburger. They have to hunt their food and they have to eat meat. So these snakes are, snakes are built to be really good hunters actually, but they're not gonna eat something they know they can't eat. Now there are 33 different types of species of snakes that live in California. Out of those 33, only six types are venomous, and they are all rattlesnakes. They're all different types of rattlesnakes, um, and I think this is very significant because rattlesnakes do something to warn their prey before they strike and release their venom. Does anybody know what that is? I'll give you a clue. It's in their name, rattlesnake. Yes, so at the end of their tail, they have a rattle and they will shake, 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 shake that rattle before they strike as a warning. And I think that's, that's pretty cool because if I'm out on the trail and I accidentally maybe go and I'm gonna step on a rattlesnake, uh, before I step on it and that snake gets really scared, it's gonna rattle and warn me before it's going to strike. And the only reason a rattlesnake might want to 
a strike is if it feels really scared or threatened. And that, that warning rattle is really a nice thing that they do, I think. Um, so it's a really good way to be able to tell if you are encountering a venomous snake or a constrictor here in California because we only the only venomous snakes we have are rattlesnakes. Okay, now these are things that all snakes have. All snakes are vertebrates. All snakes are cold-blooded, or this is also known as ectothermic. They have scales. They shed their scales. They have forked tongues and they swallow their food whole. Now, we're gonna start with vertebrates. So there are many different types of animals that are vertebrates. Um, us as humans, we are actually vertebrates. The first thing I said was that all snakes are vertebrates. Um, vertebrates, does anybody know what that means? Hmm. Can anybody raise their hand and tell me what that means? It's okay if you're unsure. Okay, um, Zora, go ahead and let me, un okay, go ahead. What, is, what do you think that means? I think it means that they, um, uh, I forget if it's either they don't have spines or they do have spines. Good, you're definitely on the right track there. So I'm gonna go with that. So it either means they have spines or they don't have spines. Um, ooh, I have some friends in the waiting room. Let's let them in. Okay. Um, so good. Now, I want you, if you think, yes, snakes have spines, put your hands on your head. If you think, no, snakes do not have spines, put your hands on your shoulders. Okay. So... No spines, yes spines. All right, very good. So most of you, I think, got it. Um, snakes do have spines. They, they do have bones, actually. Um, can you, I want you to touch your head. This is a skeleton of a snake. So, oops, it's opposite on here. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so can you touch your head? Good. Good, so snakes have a skull. They have a head bone, and you can see that right here. Um, now, can you feel your spine, feel your backbone? Good. The snakes have a long backbone. This whole long slinky part in the middle here, that is their backbone. Very good. And then, you see all these parts sticking out here? Like snakes do not have legs. Something, another thing that all snakes um, don't have is legs. Um, but those are actually their ribs. Can you feel your ribs? Yeah, they have ribs. Very good. So snakes do have spines. So they are vertebrates, which means um, they have a backbone and they do have it. They actually, they have lots of bones, as you can see. All right. So I'm going to share my slideshow with you again. Does anyone remember what the other thing was? They all have share screen. All right. It doesn't matter how many times I do this. I still, there we go. Okay. Um, so they all have scales. Um, and so I want to kind of share with you, I'm going to take out a friend here in a minute, um, but they all have scales. They actually have two types of scales. The top part of their scales, is, if you guys can see in this picture here, those are called their dorsal scales. So I remember this because um, some fish have like their, their dorsal fins. Those are like the fins um, on the top. So I remember this, the snake's dorsal scales are the scales they have on top. You can see they all lay in one direction. 
um, very similar to how our fingernails are. Um, if you notice our, our fingernails grow in one direction, if you were to pull back on them, that would really hurt. And uh, that's true with snakes. They lay in one direction. Um, their dorsal scales can help them to blend in or to camouflage. Um, I'm going to talk about that more when I share my snake friend with you guys. Um, and their scales actually pr protect their skin. So um, these scales are kind of like armor for snakes which is really important for them. Um, as you can imagine, they're, they're sliding around all kinds of areas where there's like rocks or there could be a lot of like hot sand um, and twigs on the ground. So to protect their skin, they have those scales. Uh, all right, let's move on. Now they have a second type of scale on their tummies on the bottom, and those are called scoots. And the way I remember this is because their scales on the bottom um, that are called scoots help them to slide around and they help them to grip and move. So if a snake is gonna climb up a tree, they're gonna use those scoots to grip. Sort of like um, if any of you have ever skateboarded before, uh, you know, you have the grip tape on top of your skateboard. Um, it helps your, the, the grip tape helps you to, um, for your feet to stay on the board. And so those scoots help the snake to grip when they're sliding around. And those are really important scales. All right, so um, I'm gonna stop sharing again. All right, and I am actually going to share my friend with you. Um, I have a live snake here today. <laughs> Um, her name is Elvira. Some of you may have met her before. This is her debut on Zoom. This is her first time ever on Zoom. Um, so can you guys give her a warm welcome and give Elvira a nice silent, silent cheer. <laughs> Here is Elvira. So Elvira is not um, a snake you will find in Riverside County. She is a ball python and she's from Africa. Um, so don't worry, you won't find a, a big ball python when you're hiking here in Riverside County. Um, but she is really a beautiful snake. You can see on her, let me give you guys a better view, her dorsal scales here. Those are her top scales. You can see she's got um, some dark coloring, very, and then she has like a lighter brown. Um, she's almost got like this cheetah print. And she lives in the jungles of Africa. So that actually helps her to camouflage. So what do you think is on the ground in the jungle? that she would blend in with. Okay, got Olivia A over here. I'm gonna unmute you, kiddo. What would she blend in with? Make sure you're unmuted, kiddo. I cannot hear ya. Okay. All right, there you go. So what, how would she blend in on the jungle floor? She would blend in like in dirt because no one would recognize her because she looks black. Yeah, you're right. Anything else? Anybody else want to add to that? Okay, Brie. Oh, Elvira is sticking to me. Good job, Olivia. All right, so Brie, what, what else would she blend in with? The dirt? On the jungle floor, there's lots of dirt, like the other person said, yeah. and there's Lots of leaves, twigs, and rocks. You're right. So very good. Thank you, Bree. Um, so yes, there's a lot of dead leaves that fall on the bottom of the jungle floor, um, and it's really shaded and dark. So a lot of those dead leaves are going to be that dark color, and she could blend in very well with those leaves. Good. So her scales help her to blend in. And then I also wanted you guys to see her bottom scales, her scoots that help her to scoot around. Um, you can see they're much wider, right? 
All right. You guys notice she's sticking her tongue out at you. She is not being rude. We're going to learn um, <laughs> in a minute what that means and why she's doing that. All right. So Elvira is just going to hang out with me while I um, share my screen with you again. All right. We're going to share and we're going to move on. So another thing that all snakes do is they all shed those scales. Um, and what I mean by that is they, when they grow too big, um, they don't go and like go to the store and buy new clothes like we would, right? Um, they actually go through this whole process where they crawl out of those scales um, and they get fresh new scales. Um, and it kind of, all snakes do this. Can you guys see me on the screen? Can I have a silent cheer if you guys can see me right now? Okay, good. Um, I guess it depends on what you're, you decide your view to be. So this is her shed. This is her snake shed right here. Or not hers, this is another snake, I'm sorry. But this is what it looks like. They shed it in one long piece like this. And it's kind of cool because you can actually see the pattern. Um, and I'm going to share this video with you. I caught one of our snakes the other day actually shedding. So check this out. <laughs> you can see Ruby. She's actually a, um, a California mountain king snake. You can find this kind of snake up in our local mountains here. Um, she is pushing that shed off of her. And it's it's a long process and it takes a lot of muscle, it takes a lot of moving around for her to get that off. I really like this part. And you can totally see how it like peels off and you can still see the patterning, patterning in her um, shed. So that is Ruby shedding her skin. She's pretty cool. I don't always get to catch it. So I was really excited I got to catch that on camera. All right, so we're gonna move on. What is our next one? Okay, so we're gonna get to our forked tongue. So all snakes have forked tongues. And what I mean by that, if you guys look at this picture, you can see there's two sides of that, of her, of the snake's tongue on there. Um, and they have that forked tongue because that is actually how they smell. So um, I'm gonna, Stop sharing with you for a second. So again, I have Elvira here and you can see she's sticking her tongue out. So all those smell particles are, Elvira, okay. They're sticking to her tongue. And then depending on what side those smell particles are going onto, it's gonna tell her what direction that smell is, go is, is in. So right now she's sticking her tongue out. She's just smelling everything going on. There she is. Um, and that helps her when she's hunting her prey, when she's hunting food. Um, say she's hunting for a rat and those smell particles are going on the right side of her tongue. She knows she has to go in the right direction um, to the right to find that rat. So right now she's just smelling me and she's like, oh, Miss Sammy, she's doing a program again. <laughs> And that's it. So that's why snakes have forked tongues and that's why they're constantly sticking out their tongues. Um, they're not being rude, I promise. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen with you guys again. Da, 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 da. I'm getting better at this transition. There we go. All right, we're gonna move on. All right, and this brings us to something that I find really funny. Um, all snakes swallow their food whole. And this is really amazing to me. Um, as you can see, the snake in this picture here is uh, swallowing an egg whole. That would be the equivalent of us swallowing like a, a watermelon or like a honeydew whole. Um, can we do that? Is that possible for us to do? 
No, that's not possible for us to do. Um, and the reason is because can we fit a whole watermelon in our mouth? No, <laughs> um, it would it would break our jaws if we tried to do that. But snakes, um, they actually have, oops, sorry, honey. Um, they actually have at the bottom, I don't know if you guys can see, I'm not gonna bug her in her face too much, but at the bottom of their chin, and eh, I can't really show you guys, but at the bottom of their chin, of their jaw right here, they have a ligament that's like a rubber band. So um, you guys know that rubber bands stretch, right? So at the bottom of their chin and their jaw right here, they can stretch their jaws open really wide so that they can let something like twice the size of their head um, into their mouth. And that is crazy to me. <laughs> um, and then after that, they can swallow their food down whole. Um, and that's really interesting because even if we could get that whole watermelon in our mouth, could we swallow it? What do you guys think? Yes or no? No, we couldn't swallow it, right? We have breathing, breathing tubes right here. We need to be able to breathe. So um, snakes, they can actually move the, those breathing tubes out of the way and then they can swallow their food whole. Um, as you can see in this picture here. It's, it's really amazing process. And then after a while, their stomach acids um, and their digestive process happens and that food breaks down and they don't have that big lump anymore. <laughs> um, but I think that's such an amazing thing. All right, so we talked about the things that all snakes have. I think I got it all. Yep, um, that all snakes have. Um, and that probably didn't help you guys feel less scared of them, um, but I want to let you know that there are a lot of benefits to snakes. Um, one of the main things is that they keep our rodent population down. So snakes, they can't eat, um, they can't eat grass, they can't eat flowers, they can't eat leaves, they have to eat meat. Um, it's, it's just how they're made. Um, and what they're eating is rats and mice and rodents. Now, these animals, they could populate really, really fast and they have lots and lots and lots of babies. Um, and they could take over a whole area. Um, they would take all the food from other animals. So it's really important that we have snakes uh, to keep those populations down um, so that the ecosystem is balanced. And that's a really important reason to have snakes. Um, also, something that's really cool is that snakes, uh, their venom, different kinds of venomous snakes could be used in medicine. Um, there's a really common blood pressure medicine um, that people need that, is, that are used from pit vipers in Brazil. Um, and that's a picture of a pit viper right here. Also, I just think snakes are really interesting to learn about and they're pretty cool. So I think those are some benefits of snakes. Um, now, last but not least, what should you do if you encounter a snake? Um, so first things first, what you wanna do is you guys think you should run up to the snake and grab it. Uh, silent cheer if you think that's a good idea. No, it's good, good job, don't do that. Um, first of all, snakes don't wanna eat you. Uh, you're too big for any of our local snakes to eat. Um, so the best thing to do is to stop, stay calm, back up and give it space. Okay, because you don't want to scare that poor snake. Um, then you can kind of look at it. You can see, oh, I see that snake has a rattle. That's a rattlesnake. You want to make sure you stay far away from that snake. If you have a dog, make sure your dog is close to you on their leash. And just don't bother it. Um, if you can, give it some space and go another way. Um, 
or it might just slither out of the way and, and get out of your way and then you can continue on. Um, what else? And that's about it. Um, I think it's mostly important not to panic. Um, don't handle it and just let it go on its way or you can go the other way. And that's something Thing we start to encounter in the summertime a lot, right? Who, give me a silent cheer if you have seen a snake out on a trail um, or out in the wild. Yeah, okay, quite a few of you. Um, I've def definitely had that experience more than one time. Um, and it's actually really cool. I'm, I'm always, I feel like it's a super good day when I see a snake on the trail, <laughs> as long as you're safe about it. All right, and that is my slideshow on snakes today. Um, I know we kind of are over time. Um, do I have, do I have a few minutes to ask some questions, Michelle? Okay, cool, or answer some questions. All right, so if anybody has any questions about snakes today or about Elvira or um, anything about snakes, I will try to answer. <laughs> All right, so we'll start here. All right, I got a lot of questions. Very good. Okay, so we will start. Um, Chloe. So the one time my mom on a trail was a little girl. She was like seven or six. She was on a trail and she was going camping with her mom and dad. And one time her pop, her grandpa said, which is my grandpa, her mom, her dad said, stop. Um, don't move, and there was a rattlesnake by her foot. So now she's so scared of them. Oh, yeah. That is kind of scary. And you know what? I actually had a similar um, experience when I was a kid. I was like 10 years old, and um, we we're camping in Lake Powell. Has anyone ever been uh, silent chair? If you've ever been to Lake Powell, okay. It's a really fun place to camp. Um, and And we were like having breakfast in our little where we had our kitchen set up for our camp and I looked down at my foot and there was a little baby rattlesnake and it was shaking this little rattle um, and I got so scared I jumped on the chair um, that was kind of scary I, I don't really remember what happened I just remember I was really scared I jumped on the chair and we moved our stuff away um, and that kind of scared me but yeah <laughs> so I had a really similar experience Thanks for sharing. Because huh? my, my grandpa did throw a rock on its head. Oh. All right, so I'm gonna, I think Ella had a question. So let's unmute Miss Ella. What is your question, kiddo? Oops, okay, I muted you again on accident. So I can't hear you, let's make sure. There you go, okay, what is your question? Is she a rattlesnake? <gasps> Good question. She is not a rattlesnake. Let me show you the end of her tail. Does she have a rattle on the end of her tail? No, she is a ball python and she is, <laughs> um, she is not venomous. She is a constrictor. I wouldn't be holding her if she was venomous. Um, <laughs> she's being very cute right now. <laughs> All right. Good question, Ella. Okay, Brie. So you should. Oops, um, I muted you, kiddo. Brie, did you have a question? Okay, so you showed us um, a picture in the slideshow. Uh huh. Can you guys hear me? Okay. So you showed us a picture in the slideshow and it was a rattlesnake. Was it a diamondback rattlesnake? Ooh, you know what? I don't know what kind of rattlesnake that was. Good question. Um, when I was in South Dakota, my brother held a gardener snake and it farted on him. Oh, <laughs> you know, that does happen. Um, I'm, I'm not going to say that hasn't happened to me because it definitely has. Snakes do that. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, Olivia A. And then what is your question, kiddo?
<laughs> do snakes eat birds or do birds eat snakes? That's a great question. Oh my goodness. So actually both. Um, <laughs> there are snakes that eat birds <laughs> and there are birds that eat snakes. So um, I don't know. Uh, I don't really have an example of a bird behind me that eats snakes, but um, but a hawk, different kinds of hawks and different kinds of raptor birds will eat snakes. Um, I've actually, that's something I've seen at Hidden Valley. I've seen, um, I've seen hawks flying by with snakes in their talons and it's really cool. And then um, there are definitely some snakes that eat birds. Um, I've actually seen it here at Hidden Valley. Um, there's a type of snake called a red racer and one day I had a group of kiddos with me and we heard this bird and it was chirping like crazy and we looked in the tree and there was this big red snake in the tree with a big fat belly and it had just eaten a bird so um yeah they will eat birds and there are some birds that eat snakes good question thanks Olivia mm -hmm. All right, Julia, you have been waiting really patiently. And then I think after this, I'm gonna take uh, one more question. And then if you guys have any other questions for me, you can, um, you can email me, um, you can ask us on Facebook, uh, you can call the Nature Center. So Julia, what's your question? Last week, um, I was on my way to softball practice, and um, there was a yellow snake that slithered past us while we were walking. Ooh, that is really cool. Did you say it was yellow? Yeah. Wow, that's really interesting. Cool. All right. And I think I have time for like one more question. Does anybody else have a question? All right, Bree, go ahead and make sure you're unmuted so you can ask your question, Bree. There's a bunch of rattlesnakes. One more time, I didn't get to hear that. What was the question? I never heard there's a bunch of snakes and there might be a few rattlesnakes because I live right next to Skyline. Trip. Oh, you do? Trip. Yeah, I've, I've actually, I've yeah. seen a lot of really cool snakes at Skyline. I've seen um, king snakes at Skyline, and I don't know if you guys know what a king snake looks like, but king snakes, they're, they're those black and white striped snakes, and they're called king snakes because they'll actually eat other snakes, and I've seen uh, quite a few king snakes at, um, at Skyline, so that's pretty cool. You live around there, um, but there's definitely rattlesnakes there, so there's no Every year. Did you pick up what? a king snake? No, they're venomous. The king snake. King snakes are not venomous, actually. They're constrictors. Um, king snakes are really cool because they can eat rattlesnakes. So they are immune to that rattlesnake venom. They're a really good snake to have around. All right. Wow. I have a question. Um, My mom was cool. She had a. Cool. Ooh, I, I need everybody to smile. I'm gonna take a, a picture <laughs> online right now. I love that. Get the snake, Elvira in. Elvira's here. <laughs> She's posing. <laughs> Ready? Jeez. Good job. Yay, that was so fun. All right, so to end our program today, um, I'm gonna ask again, Please uh, give me a silent cheer if you are afraid of snakes. Oh, I still have one. I still have two. Okay. Well, <laughs> oh, you know what? I think um, they can seem a little scary, but how about this question? Um, give me a silent cheer if you find snakes more interesting after today. All right, good. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, well, like I said before, if you guys have any other questions um, about snakes, um, you can leave us your a comment and a question on our Facebook. 
um, at Rivco Parks, uh, Riverside County Parks and Open Space Districts Facebook, um, or Hidden Valley Nature Center's Facebook, or you can email me or call the Nature Center. Um, I hope you guys had a really fun time today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your virtual fall camp. Thank you for letting me be here. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thank you.